All right. Hello, anyone in the refuge recovery audience who is watching this later. Uh, this is a video for the Sangha about the refuge recovery book. Um, just to warm up a little bit, what is refuge recovery? If you don't know what it is, probably this is the wrong video to watch. Uh, we're not going to explain it in detail, but to summarize, it's a recovery program like AA, but with a Buddhist theme and a focus on meditation. Uh, there's already meetings all around the US and there's lots of them in Canada. Um, and it's based on a book. The, there's a book at the heart of it. And this video is to talk about the book and its history. Um, my name is Jer and I'm sober for about 11 months so far uh, within the refuge recovery program. So it worked really well for me and that's why I care about it. Um, so, the main crux of this video will be an interview with Gary, who is someone who's been with Refuge Recovery, as far as I can tell from the start, and I want to learn about that and about uh, what he knows about the book. Um, Gary, could you please introduce yourself and explain your current role within Refuge Recovery? Sure. Hi, Jer. Uh, thank you so much for offering to do this. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of people that are interested in the history, and, and here we go. So, my name is Gary Sanders. Uh, I originally uh, am from Los Angeles, California. I first started going to Against the Stream when it first opened. And so, I should start with saying uh, there were, there were, because that's changed now, all things are impermanent, as uh, you mentioned <laughs> before our recording here. There were some a, it, there was first a recovery center that opened in uh, on Melrose in East LA called Against the Stream uh, Buddhist Meditation Society. And when it first opened, I started attending it. Uh, previous to that, you know, I'd gotten sober in AA uh, because there wasn't really else any anything else around that was a viable option. I tried other things, uh, secular sobriety. I've tried uh, you know a bunch of other things. I got some, I got started getting some books about a Buddhist approach to recovery and uh the, the one that really rang my bell was kevin griffin's book one breath at a time so you know i got that book i uh you know i got into aa i worked the steps and, and was successful at it and i also started to double down on my meditation practice that you know i'd previously I, you know I, I don't know for 25 or 28 years i've been um a bad buddhist <laughs> a, a uh, you know interested in buddhism without really uh, previous that, not really investing in a, in a song or a teacher much at all. And when I got sober, I really doubled down on my meditation practice. And, uh, and you know, and, and Book Against the Stream had just come out. Uh, previous to that, a friend of mine had turned me on to Noah's book, Dharma Punks, which I really liked. And, and I, you know, a lot of his story resonated with me. And right after I read that, there was a you know big thing in, in LA Weekly, you know, the weekly newspaper there that against a stream book is out and meditation center is done X day, whatever it was. So I, you know, I started going, I started attending. And I right away, you know, I connected with Noah, I got along with him. I mean, we're both heavily, you know, I don't know why I showed my palms. I have no tattoos on my palms. <laughs> we're, we're, both, we're both heavily tattooed people. Um and, I, and a lot of other people were in recovery in that sangha. And I don't personally, I started bugging Noah immediately about holding recovery groups at Against the Stream. Uh, started going to his retreats. And, and I, I know, I think at an early Brighton Bush one I went to, I, I held a 12-step meeting at, at lunchtime one day. You know, he was cool with me holding that. You know, and I also remember that Noah, when I held that AA, this is, this is way before Refuge, way before we did anything Against the Stream. Uh, when it was time to, for Noah to share, he said, uh, I'm Noah and I'm a recovered alcoholic. And then he went into this whole pitch of why he says he's recovered and not recovering, like they say in traditional 12-step. And that kind of lends to, to, you know, what we're talking about in Refuge nowadays. Uh, just the way that we, we, we talk about things, the way that we frame things, the way that we, we hold things to be true. So... Yeah, so I, you know, I was bugging him about uh, about doing something in recovery at against the stream, and and I would imagine that um, probably many other people were doing the same thing. I, I'd, I'd like to think that it was mm -hmm. me. You know, it was it was all me. I, you know, my idea. <laughs> but but you know what what happened was that Noah was on the 
the Buddhist Recovery Network, and there was there was a conversation within these people that were doing twelve step in Buddhism and 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 you know and and, and uh, you know other things in, with a with a Buddhist slant, and then there was this idea brought up uh, that was you know hey you know the Buddha's original teaching that the humble truth this life there is dukkha right dukkha is translated commonly as suffering or dissatisfaction stress uh certainly could be applied towards to addiction addiction is suffering addiction is dukkha so that those original teachings of the buddha in this life there is dukkha in the and, and second level truth there is a cause of this dukkha this this clinging this you know and the, this buddhist term tanha this unquenchable thirst and those of us in any any sort of addiction whether it's substance or process, you know, we in the in the heat of addiction, that quench is not. I'm, I'm sorry, that thirst is not quenched at all. That that you know, the, the, we have this this bottomless pit in our chest that we're just trying to fill with whatever substances, sex, co like compulsive shopping, whatever. It's not filled. I can't find enough of whatever it is to take me out of this moment, to take me out of the, the idea that I don't want this moment to be anything other other than what it is, that I'm uncomfortable, that I'm dissatisfied. So, you know, and then just to, to follow the Four Noble Truths that, you know, there's, there's, there is suffering, there is a cause of this suffering, there's, uh, there is freedom realized from this suffering, and then the Fourth Noble Truth is this path this path that's been practiced for 2,600 years that, that, that gets summarized as this, well, number one, it's a wheel, right? It's not this, it's not this, usually the eightfold path is shown like a, like a ship's wheel with, with eight spokes. And it, it really gets kind of thrown into these three sections, cultivating wisdom, living ethically, you know, living without causing harm, and then training our minds through mindfulness and concentration. So here's this path that's been practiced for 2,600 years of, of people successfully finding freedom from dukkha, freedom from dissatisfaction, freedom from suffering, freedom from stress, freedom from addiction. And so if that's been the case, why do we need to frame some other or, or distort some other program uh, through a Buddhist lens to apply to our addiction? Why not just try these original teachings of the Buddha that have been so successful? Why not just apply this to addiction? So that was the experiment, really. That was the question that was raised. And so we add against the stream, you know, again, because of Noah's story that first story of of dharma punks you know his story of uh actually find finding freedom from addiction freedom from the the unrelentless uh warfare in his mind he found that in uh prison while he was detoxing off of drugs uh, from some simple instructions his dad gave him. his dad was a, a famous teacher by the way who, who passed away years ago but um yeah so because of Noah's story a lot of people were attracted to against the stream. A lot of people were attracted to Dharma Punks, his first book, and, and these peer-led groups that blossomed after this book. And then, you know, the against the stream centers opened as against the stream signified that it was a a, a full-time center uh, run by people that were trained by NOAA or, you know, the, the, the organization of, of against the stream. And so we, you know, and by now we have uh, against the stream on Melrose on the east side of LA and uh, this, the original place that Noah was holding the Dharma punks groups was at, uh, I think it was originally maybe the Zen Center and then it turned into Inside LA on in Santa Monica, California. And then Inside LA did, decided to get a bigger building. And so against the stream took it over as the full-time center. So now we have two Sanghas where over half our Sangha membership are in recovery. And so, you know, let's, let's try this out. So we we developed a uh, a very simple script, you know, a simple format for meetings. It's it's very similar to the one that's in the book. You know, we've we just kind of uh, polished it, you know, through through some years of uh, field study. Uh, and the very first meetings, uh, the very first meeting was on a Tuesday night at Melrose. It was uh, me and my friend Jordan Kramer. Jordan's stories in the back of the book of the, the refuge recovery book. And then on Thursday night, uh, you know, same week, uh, Joseph Rogers and uh, uh, Enrique Colazzo, they uh, co-led the, the other meetings. So the four of us started these first meetings. And originally, you know, it was just an experiment within our sangha. 
you know, more than half our sangha is in recovery. Let's have some something that supports our sangha, something different than you know just having an AA meeting in our center, you know. And and it was it was run by people that were trained facilitators or teachers. You know, uh, most I think most of us were in facilitator training at the time, and you know part of facilitator training at against the stream was a, a, an assignment was wherever you're living start a group where where, where you're at. <laughs> so uh, you know it was nice for for me I you know to well. I actually started a group where I lived, and I, I led, the, <laughs> led uh, uh, the the refuge. And by the way, we didn't call it refuge recovery in the beginning. It was just called Buddhist recovery. And so we started it for our sanghas. We started it for our for our members, and it was run by people that were trained. And uh, and Jordan kind of faded away after a little bit, and then Pablo came in. Pablo was an empowered teacher. Pablo was there for a while. Pablo Das, I should say. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and I think it, it, George Haas, who was an associated teacher, who later I think was empowered by Noah within within that lineage, uh, Noah and Vinny um, specifically. But uh, you know George Haas was there kind of in the beginning of these meetings, and they ran very similar to the way they run now. We, you know, and I will say that this program that we developed was developed by people who all got sober in twelve step. So we had very much that was part of our conditioning. So that format of a meeting of you know, um, I mean, we did have meditation in our meeting, but you know, uh, a meditation, a little reading, then open sharing. Sounds sound familiar? <laughs> mm -hmm. hey, like, like uh, you know, and and, and you know, and, and me, you know, running the Melrose one. Um, I ended up either, you know, I had other people co help me for a while, but then they kind of faded away. So I I led the the Melrose group for four years until we got to a point to where, you know, and I'll also say that very quickly we these these meetings blossomed we started getting 80 to 100 people at both centers wow there was there's was people that were showing up that were just really all jazzed up for various reasons and still this, this, a lot of the same reasons why people show up at refuge now uh whatever it is eight or nine years later uh there's people that show up that just want to deepen their 11th step there's there's people that want to work both programs you know i want i, I want to stay in 12 step but i want to try this thing too because buddhism uh, resonates with me there's a lot of people that show up that uh, maybe either reluctantly were in it, were, were in twelve step, and just did it because it was the only other thing around. But now, you know, all these years later, there's there's people that are showing up with no twelve step conditioning, no twelve step experience at all, and then getting right into into uh, refuge recovery. And uh, and I'll also say, give a shout out. You know, I've I've since moved to Portland, Oregon, uh, about three years ago, and it's thriving up here. I think we just did twenty meetings a week. And uh, a few months ago, as far as I know, the first time in, in refuge history, somebody did 90 meetings in 90 days, all refuge in Portland. So you know, <laughs> this thing's growing. Wow. Anyway, back to the history. Sorry, am I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm on a roll here. I'm, I'm uh, flowing with it. And, and, is there a, uh, hey, don't need to take whoever, a breath. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who's watching, I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, we got a great description <laughs> of what refuge recovery is, why it's so important. Uh, learning the the background of the necessity for this program I'm get to the book here. from AA is really valuable. Yeah, we'll get to the book for sure, and I'll I'll put the time code yeah, down at the yeah. bottom for anyone who wants to just jump to that. But this is I think it's really great. So, uh, what, did you want to continue what you were saying? Uh, sure. Yeah. Well, Portland is um, big. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just as far as those those original meetings, and we you know as the meetings went on, uh, again. They weren't peer led, you know. They were. We did guided meditations, and so we did. We we only had the script, and then uh, and then I think fairly quickly we had this adaptation adaptation of the four noble truths and the eightfold path, you know, with just the little twist towards towards addiction, which is you know it's it's found in the refuge book now, it's still used. Um, again, just slight editing through the through the years. Um, so that's what we had. We just had that. We didn't have guided meditations. You know, we, we we were trained facilitators or teachers. So we, you know, we offered these meditations. We offered various stuff. We did uh, originally both meetings. We did a regular meeting three times a month, and then we did one speaker meeting. And I think both meetings found after after maybe a few months, we couldn't find very many Buddhist speakers. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we we kind of dropped that that format of, of again. This is all twelve. You know, kind of a 
uh, twist off 12. It's the stuff that we were used to in 12 step, you know? So we kind of dropped that speaker meeting and, and, and then just, you know, just continue with this, this program. And then we, it, it was so wildly successful. Like I said, 80 to 100 people at both meetings. We, uh, as a group decided, well, also because it was wildly successful, I shouldn't say we decided it was, it was out of necessity. There were these Dharma punks groups throughout the country that are, these are peer led groups, right? Noah's first book came out, Dharma punks. These people were really inspired by Buddhism. They want to practice and, and they weren't trained in any way. And so Noah was just like, you know, start a group, you know, it's a DIY, you know, a total punk rock kind of um, ethic and all this stuff. You know, you, if, if you want to meditate, you want to have a group, start it yourself. And, you know, it, it, and it's just known as this peer led thing. So, and again, because of Noah's first story about his finding, finding, you know, peace and ease and, and, and forgiveness through meditation and, and, and finding recovery through meditation. Uh, you know, people in all these Dharma punks groups all over the country, and in fact, all over the world, they, a lot of them are in recovery, more than half of them. So they were hearing about this Buddhist recovery program that we had at Melrose and in, in, in uh, Santa Monica and started asking about it. We started sharing our format with these other Dharma punks groups. And, you know, and again, out of necessity, people got really jazzed about it. And, and you know, a lot of people didn't have any training. So we were required to number one, turn it into a peer led program. And number two, you know, create material to help, to help uh, support these people that are leading the meeting as a peer led thing. And, and so we created the, the guided meditation scripts. And so you know, again, this is our foundation to what, what I ended up being. Sure. At, at this point, you're talking about the refuge recovery meetings, not against the stream meetings, or are you, 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 right. You're talking about, and you no, were, no, no. you were calling recovery. it. Yeah, it, 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 it was called Buddhist recovery. And then, and I'm not sure what, what point it, it, it uh, I think at the point when, uh, I think Noah was pushed enough to, to create a book about this, right? That we have this program that's successful. It's being used in Dharma punks groups and, um, Let's do a book. You know, of course, you know, he's got a book deal and his publisher is like, hell yeah, we want another book. And, uh, and, it, and I'm not sure who all kind of, you know, brainstormed the, the, the names or who came up with Refuge Recovery, but that was one of the things that was offered. And to be honest, I hated the name. I, 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 I thought it, I, it, it didn't Breaking walk the tongue to me. It, 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 it was like, yeah, I don't like that at all. And, and also, um, so now there was this, this, this decision, okay, we got this peer led program. It's successful. We got these guided meditations. Let's, let's put a book together and, and, you know, get it out to everybody. And so we started meeting as a group, you know, it, it, uh, it wasn't just Noah, you know, uh, it was, uh, you know, it was uh, those of us that started the meetings, you know, uh, me and Joseph and Enrique, um, maybe Jordan was a, a little part of that. Uh, but, you know, Mary Stancavage, who ran um, the centers, you know, Mary, who, who's been in long-term sobriety, she was there. Pablo Das was there. You know, he's been, he's been, you know, he's an empowered teacher and, um, you know, been working with people in recovery, especially, especially with, like process addictions. And George Haas, who's been in like super long recovery and a teacher, you know, he's, he was part of the thing. And Dave Smith is on the, on the phone. He's, he's a uh, part of these conference calls or these, these groups, you know, from, from uh, Tennessee at the time, Nashville. And, you know, so it was this group of us that would get together and kind of workshop what was developed into the book. And, uh, you know, and we, and we did, we sent it, the manuscript was sent out to some of these, these, these refuge groups, you know, now, now everybody's using the term refuge and, 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 and I have to say all these years later, as, as much as I was resistant to it, it, it now just seems like it's the right thing to say. Oh, I, I will say another thing of why I was resistant to it while we had this committee of putting the book together, uh, Tara Brock's new book came out, her second book. And I love Tara Brock. Her, her book, her first book, um, Radical Acceptance is fantastic. And I recommend that to anybody, especially people in recovery. Um, her second book came, came out and it was called True Refuge. And now we got this book that's going to be coming out. That's got a deadline going to be coming out called Refuge Recovery. And I was like, dude, gonna cause confusion let's not do it you know and, and uh it's still it, it happened and here we are and and, and now it, it seems like it 
you know, it can't be called anything but refuge recovery. But um, yeah, so the, you know, the, the book got, um, you know, and I think, I think it's, it's easy to admit and easy to accept that uh, the book was rushed. You know, there's, there's errors in the book. There's some um, grammatical and I think maybe some spelling errors. It, it was rushed. I mean, yeah, it's a big publisher, but they, they, they wanted it to go to press at a certain time. And, and Noah did really try and advocate and make sure he, he didn't want to put his name on it. You know, he wanted it because it was this group of people. And he even says in the intro of the book that it wasn't just him. You know, it was, it was this group of people that started the meetings. It was this group of people that put the book together, that, that put the program together. Um, Joseph Rogers is the one that did most of the questions um, for, a, for a, a, an early workshop that we did for our songas in LA. And yeah, I mean, it, that, it, was, it was never just one person. It was a, a sangha, it was a community. And, you know, we're also in a materialistic world. Uh, Noah was a known name with a book deal from a, um, you know, his books have done well with his publisher, so they refused. They had to put his name on it to promote it, to sell it. And, and you know, and, and he wasn't happy about it, but that was just, you know, it wasn't gonna get put out otherwise. So the, the book was put out. I think was that four years ago now, maybe a little over four years ago now, and things blew up when uh, the book went out. And um, you know, and just being part of this since day one, uh, seeing it, you know, go worldwide, seeing seeing what what really warms my heart. You know, I have two daughters, right? And 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 I love my daughters more than anything, and I want my daughters to be to feel supported, to feel loved, to feel empowered, right? And, and within refuge, there are some tremendous, very strong, powerful women's groups that have that have arisen out of necessity. Um, you know, because in 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 a lot of traditional twelve step, those aren't safe places for women. You know, that's there's there's people are predatory. You know, and there's that that, that joke that thirteen stepping. You know, it's a joke. People smile about it, and you know, and, and the, the fact the reality it's sexual harassment. It's it's it's, you know, a lot of times it leads to worse, you know, date rape, uh, straight out rape. I mean, uh, to, you know, to be blunt about it, it's, it's, you know, those, those situations aren't, you know, a lot of mixed meetings aren't safe for uh, new women, younger women in recovery. And so, you know, these, these, these women's groups have arisen that have just provided so much safety and so much support. And it's been beautiful here in Portland. We have, and I will say Portland, uh, as soon as the book came out, there was, a, I think, a 12-step Buddhist group that was meeting at my, my friend uh, Gensho, who I co-teach with. He's one of my best friends now, Gensho Welsh. He was a teacher at, at Heart of Wisdom Zen Temple. They turned their Buddhist 12-step meeting into a refuge recovery meeting. And then, and then it just, you know, and then it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger here. And, uh, um, and why did I bring that up? Um, about the book, oh, about women. Um, here in Portland, uh, we are super organized. We're one of the first um, bigger city sanghas uh, that created an inner sangha with a board, um, with these uh, um, affinity groups like, you know, there's a, there's a women's group, there's a men's group, there's an LG, uh, LGBTQ group. Um, there's a, a, there was a, one of the early meetings here was a healthcare practitioner. So people that were therapists or, or um, psychologists or whatever that, um, you know, don't want to see their patients in a, in a meeting, but they're, they're in recovery themselves and they need a meeting, you know? So we've been super organized and, um, yeah, we, 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 we've got strong support here and that, and that's been beautiful to see that pop up all over the place. And, you know, I've, uh, I've been able to help this thing grow. You know, I've, I've, start, I've, I've helped a lot of people start meetings all over the world. Um, uh, I will say that the one thing that I hear really across the board, you know, more often than not, that, uh, and especially people that have 12-step conditioning, they come into refuge and they say that um, the one thing I've heard from many different people ac across the world was that uh, they feel that uh, refuge recoveries has felt like a graduate program for, from them from 12 step. You know, they've done 12 step for 20, 30 years and it's great. And now they have this other thing to go into that, that really touches into the spiritual aspect of recovery that touches into this, this deeper level of fellowship, this, this, uh, this way of training our minds and our hearts and unburdening ourselves even more, even after long-term sobriety and 12 step. And, and I'm not, 
talking down about 12 step. I still go to 12 step meetings myself. You know, I still do, I do both programs myself, but, um, uh, yeah, you know, this, this, this people are showing up for, I don't know if I'm, I, I think I've started to say this and I don't know if I said this out loud, but you know, the, in the beginning and still to this day, people show up for various reasons for refuge. You know, either they, they want to deepen the 12 step, they, uh, they want to do both programs or, they they're they're aversive to twelve step for whatever reason, or they just haven't even tried twelve step. And this you know Buddhism rings their bell, or or you know uh, you know the other big thing is since we don't have a higher power, number one in Buddhism, we don't have a higher power in refuge, and we don't have to turn it over our lives and our wills over to a higher power. That that in fact the refuge recovery message is we have the potential. Um, ourselves, no matter what we've done, what we've been accused of, what kind of addictions we've had, uh, no matter what, we all have the potential to awaken. We all have the potential in our, in our, with our own power within community to wake up from dukkha, to wake up from addiction. So, yeah, so here we are, you know, whatever it is. Um, I think about nine years after we started the first meetings and, and, and a, you know, in a name and a book and you know, and, and, and I'm lucky enough to say that, you know, I'm one of the founders, you know, along with uh, Enrique and Joseph and, and Joseph's wife, Sarit, has been there since day one, Sarit Rogers and, you know, George Pablo Das and, and uh, Dave Smith, you know, um, that, that, you know, it, it continues to be a group of us. I mean, it's evolved, you know, um, uh, I don't, I don't whatever's happening with Noah right now um, has affected a lot of people. It, you know, and I don't want to downplay this. You know, Noah's been accused. Yeah. You want to stop right there? Yeah. Could I, um, <laughs> so you've, okay. So you've devastated my question list. Uh, you've answered uh, most of them already in some amount of detail. Uh, if I, if, if it's okay, I might yeah, take a totally. second to contextualize like where we are right now with refuge recovery and with Noah and the story you, you were about to reference, I think a lot of people are already aware. Um, but just to summarize it a little bit, there's a controversy with Noah, who is, as you've described, uh, certainly one of the key founders of refuge recovery, and importantly, the person whose name is on the book, um, and who around whom the original community seems to have coalesced. Uh, right, he brought you, you. were following him. You were um, empowered by him as a teacher, right? A lot of the refugees. Well, I was I was empowered by him as a, a facilitator and a Dharma group okay. leader, but not a teacher. I'm I'm empowered by my own teacher here in Portland, Robert Beatty. Okay, okay. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Um, so the controversy revolves around uh, accusations against Noah of sexual misconduct. Oh. Um, Legally speaking, currently there's no legal case uh, against NOAA from the police that's ongoing or that seems like it's going to terminate in in, uh, in any kind of uh, conviction. But the Against the Stream board did a review of the stories. They did an investigation with a third party. NOAA participated, and the conclusion was that he was guilty of some kind of sexual misconduct within the terms he agreed to as an ethics, the ethics guidelines for Against the Stream. Yes. Um, in this process, he has left Against the Stream. Against the Stream, unfortunately, closed. We won't, I won't try and summarize that whole issue right now. Well, and, and just to clarify, he was removed from Against the Stream. He, he didn't yeah. leave it voluntarily. He was, he was because of this preponderance of evidence to his yeah. misconduct, yeah. What, what seems to be an overwhelming amount of evidence, a lot of people, yeah who looked carefully and thought about it strikes them that there must be something. I don't want to say my own opinions about it. Um, mm. But he was ejected from against the stream, you might say. And in a similar way, he is no longer on the board of directors of refuge recovery. Right. Um, and that is probably a good thing because it is dangerous in our Sangha to have this as a source of bad reputation for us. Um, and yeah. a lot of people definitely, uh, based on Facebook groups, based on talking to people in my own Sangha in Montreal, um, want to distance themselves from Noah. They don't want to consider him as their teacher because they don't feel that there's the trust there at this point. Right. Right. Um, so getting back to, to the reason I, I bring that up because we're talking about the book. So here's my book. 
Uh, I have the paper one at home. It's so full of notes. It's filthy and I love it, but I didn't bring it here to Mexico. So I just have the Kindle version, which is nice and cheap right now. So uh, that's a good thing. The book is the heart of the program. And it's tough because people feel, and I think I understand why they feel an urge to boycott Noah at this point. Sure. Uh, they feel totally his, understand. His behavior and his reaction to the whole situation also. There's yeah, a lot that leads to be desired for such a beautiful teacher who we put so much trust in. And like, just to yeah. contextualize, like you, Noah really specifically spoke deep to me. Uh, I was listening to the podcast, the 2013 episodes, right around when the, the book came out, the Refuge Recovery book came out. Mm -hmm. And it, was, it really changed my life. And so it was disturbing to learn this news. Um, but we can't live in a way we shouldn't try and live in a way to protect our heroes when they are dishonest with themselves yeah okay no way so nope. yeah, right we, we need All to right. protect the community as a whole yeah yeah so there's a challenge that comes up and uh for example in montreal one of our meeting leaders uh decided not to use the book at all she yeah. felt that the book itself was a source of strain and pain for her uh, especially once the increasing preponderance of evidence with the two different Jezebel articles, which I'll include uh, with the video that'll come with the links. Um, so people can read up on the details that were slowly uh, exposed and leaked out to the community. Uh, it became unacceptable for her to sort of like read the words, right? If you read the words of someone, it's a prayer to them on a very personal level and at refuge recovery meetings, we really do read the words out loud over and over and over. And so the idea of a, re a recovery meeting where you watch Woody Allen movies over and over or quote mm -hmm. Louis C.K., right? Rightfully, people are worried about this. Um, and so the, that's to contextualize why I think it's really important to get specific about how the book was co-written. Um, the introduction to the book that you mentioned, which uh, maybe I'll just read it quickly here because I think it's interesting. Um, Noah says, although I am credited with writing the book, the large community at Refuge Recovery is the inspirational and creative force behind it. This community has helped shape, inform, and enhance the program with their direct experience of practicing these principles. This book then should be viewed as a collaborative effort, a book written for the plural rather than the singular, the we instead of the I since it speaks for Buddhists and addicts everywhere. Um, and you know, that's right. It's like one of the first pages of the book. When I read it, I thought that's, that's beautiful. Uh, I love this book even more. Uh, I was lucky enough to read it a couple months before the scandal. So uh, I got to have a pure heart with it. Um, and for those who haven't read the book or don't remember it, it, it really does follow through on that premise. I think in the way it's written, it says we, we believe we have found um, and it's very, there's very, like, I've heard people say, you can hear Noah's voice. It's, it's, it's unmistakably written by Noah. Uh, to some degree, they feel that. Um, but at the same time, I think it's carefully written to try and subvert that. And the fact that the second half, just for anyone unfamiliar with the structure, the first half is uh, the teachings themselves and the inventories. And then the second half is testimonials by different people, seemingly everyone but you, Gary. Uh, Wrote very I was, I was, beautiful. You know what? I, I I didn't get mine in time for, for the publishing. I was oh. I was uh, I was a slacker. <laughs> okay, cool. Somewhere on my computer still. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily you're still out there teaching, so uh, lots of people all get to hear your story uh, yeah. over the over the years. Um, so then the second half literally is written by multiple people. So mm -hmm. to me, the the one of the issues with that beautiful quote I just read is it doesn't mention anyone. Uh, like a random novel will often have more specific credit given to people who help the author than the yeah. recovery book. And I'm sure there's a lot of reasons for that. Did, did you want to say anything about that in particular? Noah has a big ego. Noah has a big ego. Okay. I can... <laughs> that's, that's, that's a little bit of a joke. It's also a little bit of truth to that too. <laughs> we, we, you know, we, uh, I don't think um, that was a discussion. I think it was just done. You know, he was the one with the book deal and that was, you know, um, it is what it is. So, you know, there's there's a few things I'll say about 
this is an issue. Number one, the the situation where you're at um, in Montreal, that one person got to decide for the whole community that you're not going to use the book. That's that's not cool. The way the way our programs are uh, recommended, that everything you know, you know, again in our the guidelines, the um, the the guiding principles that we have, mm -hmm. you know, each, each uh, meeting is autonomous, you know, very much kind of like twelve step model. But uh, each meeting as a whole has to decide these ch changes to a format, um, changes, you know, uh, uh, about material. Um, it, it, yeah, the community needs to decide that for the, the greater good of the community, not just one person. One meeting should not be one person's meeting. That's why we have a, a six month commitment with everything. You know, this truly is a grassroots peer led program. So, so that, that, that's just that, that particular where, where you're at. And I don't, you know, and maybe I'm, uh, maybe that's not exactly how the situation is there, but that's what it sounded like to me. Um, number two, you know, yes, there's an acknowledgement. There, there's definitely, um, the, there's parts of the book that are written in Noah's voice. I mean, he was the one that kind of put it together. But like I said, there was a, I, I gave you the names of the people that, that helped, that, that truly helped put this together. That, you know, and also say those, the, that first four years of, of uh, me leading the meeting at, uh, at Melrose, you know, with some other people in the beginning and Joseph and, and, and Enrique leading their meeting for four years at, at uh, Santa Monica and then us turning it over to the community and having it every six months, having people, you know, having the, the, the group vote in, uh, you know, have, have a group conscience uh, of voting in this, this new leader for six months. Um, Noah maybe went to a couple of those meetings through those years. Like, you know, it was us. The community is the one that shaped these meetings. You know, it started with this community in Los Angeles, but like I said, we passed it out to all these Dharma punks groups and then they started their own refuge recovery groups. So we workshopped this as a community. You know, it's, it's Noah wasn't there taking notes, you know, he, he's, you know, he's, he, he, yeah, he, he kind of put everything together and, and put this book together, but we're the ones that kind of, that really kind of edited it and, and put it all together and, and, um, you know, and, and, and whittled it down. And the other big issue here is the, that, that thing that I told you our, our program is made about, you know, the four noble truths and the eightfold path. This is the Buddhist program. It really is only a slight a, just a slight it's not a it's not this acrobatic you know bending and contorting like you got to do with with some other programs it's it's just a slight little twist of adapting the buddha's teachings to recovery we're not in reinventing the wheel here noah didn't do anything uh we as a community just did a little bit slight change of these these teachings so um, so I, you know, I hear it when people say, you know, people have all, all kinds of different traumas. People have sexual trauma and they, and, the, and this has triggered them and this has affected them. I don't want to negate that. I don't want to, I don't want to downplay that. I don't want to tell you to not have your feelings, but, but I do want to just throw this out here and, you know, and I'm, and I'm thankful, uh, Jared, that you've given me this opportunity to talk about the reality of the situation. Yeah, it's in the book. And, um, you know, I mean, there's a slight nod to it in the beginning of the book, but you know, here, here's what happened. And, you know, again, when, when Noah was first, I mean, this is now, this is over six months ago that these allegations came out and Noah was put on suspension from, you know, the Against the Stream uh, Teachers Ethics Committee and the Grievance um, Council. Uh, he was taken off the board at Refuge Recovery. And this program is bigger than any one person. You know, it's bigger than Noah. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than all of us. That all of us founders that started it. It's developed into this this this, this beautiful, enormous thing. And you know, and again, acknowledging uh, all of us that show up at recovery meetings, include and and even Dharma groups. I'd say 99.9% .9 of us that show up, we don't show up because our lives are great. We don't show up because we're completely healthy and we're happy. We show up because we're fucking suffering. Excuse my language here. We're 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 desperate. That was my thing. I can't, I find that I drag myself into a meditation center because I was desperate. So, you know, there, we're in per, imperfect people with, with trauma that are, that are, you know, putting this thing together that are running this thing. And so of course we're going to have problems, but I will say, you know, and I brought up uh, the, 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 the tradition of, of predatory behavior in 12 step, 
I, you know, again, I've, I've been at this since day one with Refuge. I've helped people all over the world start meetings. I've been, before we got organized, you know, now I'm, I'm in on the Pacific North, uh, the Pacific Crest region one for refuge recovery i'm one of the the, the, the reps you know what whatever mm -hmm. that means um i got i have access to another email address that's about all it means <laughs> but, but be uh, nice it's a wonderful no, 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 new program no, 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 it's, it's, democracy in the organization no, 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 right no it's no no i'm i'm i'm, I'm kind of downplaying it because we're we're trying to figure out what even what to do right now with with the mm -hmm, whole thing mm -hmm. um uh, I mean, it, it is all, it's important. I'm just kind of making light of, of the situation. But um, I have not heard a preponderance of uh, accusations about predatory behavior in meetings. I have not heard about um, people getting violent in meetings. I have not heard about people getting their purses ripped off in meetings. I, I mean, we we have had problems, but I, I can just speak, my, my, for, uh, speak for myself. Personally, it, it seems like the numbers are way, way down than other programs and not just 12 step, but other, you know, whatever, whatever else is out there. We, we have, it, it just seems like it's a lot more compassionate. It's a lot safer and, um, and, and people are really thriving from it and getting, and, and getting um, you know, finding freedom from it. And, and again, it's this, this community, you know, and now we've linked up, we have these different regions, we have regional reps, we have a, there's a, there's a nonprofit board for refuge recovery, which is different than the for-profit treatment center that Noah also called refuge recovery, which definitely caused confusion in the marketplace. Um, I think that's since closed just within the last week or two. So yeah, the, we're, we're, we're specifically talking about the, the refuge recovery nonprofit peer led program. And um, yeah, yeah, please. <clears throat> So uh, if I could jump in there, one thing I want to say, like, and really the point here is to convince people to not give up on the program because of this controversy. So that's, that is my agenda. Now that you've, anyone who's watched for 48 minutes, maybe uh, it's exposed already. Um, I'll point out that if we're looking, like when I think about against the stream and refuge recovery, which in this context are very linked up against the stream, the source organization that created, the, that represented the community and refuge recovery, sort of a spin-off. I know that's not accurate, but conceptually, there's, there's a truth there. Well, it was, and, it was born out of that. Yeah. yeah, so Refuge Recovery didn't do an investigation of NOAA because they trusted against the stream to do that investigation. Right. And in this case, if what we're looking at is, is this a reliable organization where we can trust them? What more could they conceivably do than turf their founder and spiritual leader um, it's terrible for business. It's extremely edgy and it shows that they're legitimate because the, yeah. it's the legitimate thing to do. They found problems and they did the hardest possible decision they could make, um, mm -hmm. which in the short term might hurt them. In the long term, I think I'm, I'm confident for refuge recovery in the long term, it was the right decision. Um, and if it, if it is going to get six feet, and I'm sure it will, uh, it'll be because we can, we know we could trust them. Um, yeah. And that, and that that's really important. And that, and also this, there's a fun fact about the history of AA, where the leader of AA also exhibited similar predatory behavior as mm -hmm. the accusations against Noah, and was tolerated, and was still going to conferences, and had bodyguards following him around to make sure he didn't harass women. Um, I think that's true. I, I I definitely heard that in the comments recently. And yeah, I think his mistress family of, still gets uh, a portion of the 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 profits of the book. Yeah. So when we look at refuge recovery, we see a very modern organization that's doing everything they possibly can in this context, uh, where hopefully in this, especially in this new structure, that's more independent from NOAA, that's more about uh, Gene and Chris, the current uh, leads of the, 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 the organization, as far as I understand. Yeah, they're on the board, that, yeah. yeah. That, that their, their interest is definitely in keeping refuge recovery clean in dealing with any uh, ethical violations at the local level in a really responsible way and uh I, at least personally i think if, if that's our concern if it's this idea that the actual space isn't safe we should work with them and build an organization that's strong and it's it's almost impossible uh it is impossible to make a completely safe space it's almost impossible to do your to really do that without it making any mistakes but mm -hmm. 
There's no reason to think they haven't done anything that shows that they will be making big mistakes. In fact, they've done the opposite and made really hard decisions in the name of safety. Yeah, and you know, the one thing I'll, I'll say, you know, I know my heart of hearts, and if it wasn't this thing, it would have been something else. So, you know, it's not about organizations like this not having any problems. That's just, that's not gonna happen. There will be problems. It's about how do we pick up the pieces after something big happens, after the, you know, again, excuse the, after the shit, it's a fan, you know? How, how do we act as an organization? How healthy are we? How supportive are we when things go wrong? Because things will go wrong. All things are impermanent, which means there's gonna be an ebb and flow to everything. There's gonna be, uh, you know, the, the Buddha talked about these eight worldly wins, praise and blame, loss and gain, pleasure and pain, uh, fame and disrepute. It's just gonna happen. So, you know, can we find health? Can we find support? Can we find a, a community within this all? And the answer is yes. So far, so good. All right, all right. Okay, so, mwah, ah, this is going so well. Um, going back to my questions, sorry if it gets a little boring as I go into some of the details. Um, Joseph Rogers, so another one of the links I'll include with the video is uh, by Joseph Rogers, The History of Refuge Recovery. And so he talked about the uh, Buddhism and Recovery Conference, uh, mm -hmm. which as a, as a founding point, um, do you want to say anything about that? Well, I mentioned that in the beginning, there, there was this conversation at the Buddhist Recovery Network. That's, that's one and the same. The conference was the conference for the Buddhist Recovery Network. So there, okay. you know, Ke Kevin Griffin was a part of that, and and um, uh, Marlott, uh, who, who yeah. passed away. Alan um, Marlott from yeah, Alan you know, Marlott, and, and um, yeah. So there was just this 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 conversation. Hey, you know, do we really need to continue to use twelve step or whatever else? Can we just use the Buddha's original teachings? And mm -hmm. and so we did that as an experiment, that against stream, and here we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and so Alan Marlott had some uh, research findings that meditation helped people in recovery, but only if it was consistent. And that uh, he proposed that what was needed was ongoing meetings to help people stay consistent in their meditation as part of recovery. Um, so that, that's an idea that inspired all of you and uh, wasn't from Noah. Uh, the five week course was the next step. And jo so Joseph, says that he uh, wrote the original draft of the inventories, which included in it, it seems like this seed of the Four Noble Truths uh, sort of methodology that you described above. Yeah. Yep. Uh, 100%. So, yep. 100%, yeah. And, and that, was, yeah. that was something you used in your uh, sort of prototype meetings and around 2008? It was, it was offered as a supplement to these meetings that were already going on. Um, okay. we, we held this uh, we held this workshop in uh, at Santa Monica, and we literally worked on the question while we were there. Uh, you know, we we partnered up with somebody else. So, which is interesting that you know back then we did this thing, this this idea, this Kalyana Mita idea, this this pure this peer led, um, non hierarchy person to person working on these questions together. And then you know, and as the book came out, and there's this mention of the the term mentor. Which, to be honest, there, there's a few things. Uh, Joseph Rogers and I, I will point this out because he didn't put that in, the, in his article. Both Joseph and Rogers and I have been crying, screaming at the top of our lungs, don't call these inventory questions. And again, Joseph's the one that wrote them. It sounds too much like 12-step. These are investigations or these are inquiries. And, um, and I'm hoping that, you know, maybe the next uh, version of the book or if we have to write a new book, uh, that, uh, that, that we refer to these things as investigations or inquiries, which is a, more of a, a, a proper term for contemplative work. Um, so, so that's number one. And, and number two, um, you know, this, this, this mentor idea, again, you know, we, we all had 12 step conditioning, you know, spon sponsor, sponsee, big daddy tells you how to wipe your butt. You know, big daddy tells you to mow his lawn. Big daddy tells you that, you know, uh, what to say to your wife when you're when you're fighting, and that's not what we have here, you know. And and so using that term mentor has that same kind of idea, that hierarchy idea, you know. And, and really this, the 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 more appropriate uh, thing. Well, and and also the 
what Noah put as the requirements for mentors in the book were way too strict. You know, at the time in LA, we had enough people that were, that, uh, that were trained facilitators and deep practitioners that met these requirements, but that wasn't the case in everywhere else. And when the book came out and there's all these brand new people, nobody met the requirements of, uh, of what a mentor is. So when we held the very first annual International Refuge Recovery Conference, which, which was held at the Melrose Against the Stream Conference, that was, that was one of the biggest things that everybody kept saying. Uh, we want to work the program, but we don't have anybody that's qualified to be a mentor. So at the very end of the conference, Noah got up and was doing the closing thing. And he said, I just want to address this. The requirements that we put in the book were way too strict. Just go ahead and mentor each other. And so that was, the, that was just the charge. Mentor each other. And people are still stuck on that idea that, that even though that's been said, even though that's been passed around, it's still in the book. You know, it says that, you know, whatever it is, you know, you got to. You gotta work, you gotta have done both inventories and go on uh, X amount of retreats and you know walk on water and you know whatever you know speak in tongues <laughs> and whatever you know it's, it's, uh, what, what, whatever it is. Uh, what what is what is more helpful? What is more supportive? What is more sustainable is to just work on this stuff together. And whether it's a just a one on one and you know and I use that term Kalyanamita. That's a that's a traditional. It's a it's a term in Pali. You know in the the, the original language that was uh, of the, the first recording teachings of the Buddha. Uh, Kalyanamita means spiritual friend, you know, and, and uh, you know, there's this, this one passage in the Pali Canon that Ananda, um, which is uh, the Buddha's cousin, um, that he was the guy that, that remembered everything word for word. Uh, he's also like the perfect straight man. And, and, I, and I mean that in the, like the old world comedian sense, you know, he's the, he was the laurel to, you know, uh, uh, Buddha's hardy, you know, kind of thing. So, you know, one day, uh, you know, Ananda came up to the Buddha and, hey, Buddha, uh, tell me, brother, um, having a spiritual friend, is it, is it maybe half the spiritual life, half the practice? And the, and the Buddha, in, in the way he said, no, Ananda, having a spiritual friend is not half the practice. Having a spiritual friend is the whole of the practice or the whole of the spiritual life. So this spiritual friend, again, the, the Pali term is Kalyanamita, that's more of, of, of what we're talking about in this program. You know, this 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 one on one, this level playing field, not a hierarchy, not somebody telling you what to do, but you're working on this together. You're waking up together. That's what the whole path's about, right? The, taking refuge in Sangha. We get to wake up together. So, you know, whether it's a one on one, some groups you call them Dharma buddies. Uh, many groups are doing um, even, they're, they're actually, when I say group, I mean meetings. Some, you know, in meetings, people are doing small groups of like three or four people together, all working on this thing together, you know, keeping each other accountable. Um, one of the things that I will offer that, that I, you know, a lot of people come into the program, and they're just like, what do I do? Uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of suggestions out there. One of the biggest things is getting a daily practice, you know, and I think it says that in the book, you know, that, the, that you should start in practice. Uh, in the book, it says you should start with concentration practice, with breath awareness. Personally, I'd, uh, uh, I, I, I tell people to start in, in recovery, if they're brand new to it, they start with metta, start with loving kindness, because we come into recovery and we are just so full of resentment and shame and blame against ourselves and against everybody else. We need this loving friendliness practice, this loving kindness practice, address that, that much poison that's coursing through our veins, you know, uh, figuratively anyway. So anyway, uh, I recommend, you know, finding somebody that, that to work on these questions together and somebody to help you stay accountable about getting into daily practice. So, you know, find one or three or four other people and after you're done meditating every day, send a text to each other. All right, I just sat for 20 minutes, or I, I just sat for 30 minutes, you know, and I have found that has been really, really helpful to start a sustainable daily practice. Uh, you know, work on your questions together. My suggestion, because the questions admittedly are ridiculously long, there is a crap load of questions. Don't wait to do the whole thing before you read it to somebody else. Do it in five question chunks. You know, each of you, you know, whatever, whether it's one on one or, uh, you know, three other people, uh, three or four other people, uh, work on your questions together in, in little chunks, palatable, bite sized little chunks. Really double down on meta practice and forgiveness while you're answering these questions. Because we are, you know, first, first uh, 
investigation questions. <laughs> the, sure. the first section, we are looking at the cause of suffering in our lives. And if you haven't done the questions yet, spoiler alert, we're the cause of our own suffering. Nobody else. <laughs> so well, that's not to say that other people haven't done horrible things to us, but uh, uh, you know, there's a difference between pain. There's a difference between suffering, right? Uh, there's the, the old line, I think the Dalai Lama says, the pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. So this all this extra suffering that we heap on top of experience. I don't like this. I don't want this to happen. This shouldn't be like this, you know? So uh, we, can, we can address that. We can't address the pain, but we can address our suffering. And we can do it together and, um, you know, uh, be really kind to ourselves during these questions while we're looking at the cause of our suffering. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, just support each other. That's it. Mentor each other, like it was said at the first conference. Okay, so let me, let me grab this back for a second. Um, I'll second your motion to do the inventory questions. I know there's a lot of people at my sangha who just never got around to it. I think they read it and then, and then moved on, and it's really worthwhile doing it. I think I did them all over the course of a week, and my hand was really hurting. So maybe that's too fast. Probably wrote a book. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I had, I had like 50 pages of, of handwritten in my little book. Um, mm -hmm. But taking care of yourself. Yeah, I lit some candles. I put on some Liquid Mind cheesy music, and, uh, and it really worked out. And it, and it meant a lot. So definitely there's value there. Uh, don't, don't skip it. The, your point about mentors is, I mean, it's not really about the history of the book, but I completely agree with you. In our Sangha, when I got there, there was literally no one who could have qualified to be my mentor. Um, and then as people theoretically came online as potential mentors, the likelihood that they were, their recovery was troubled within the meantime, or that they just weren't coming to meetings anymore. Um, I'm definitely, I want to get started. There's on the uh, action guide sort of section of the Refuge website. I know there's some special meeting scripts designed to do a whole afternoon and work on your questions together. And I'm, I'm yeah. definitely planning when I get back to Montreal, I'm going to do some of that. And I think uh, yeah. moving in that direction is really like a wholesome thing, especially because there's so many new meetings and we want there to be new meetings. And it's, it is weird in the book. Mm -hmm. and hearing that, that that was something Noah sort of inserted, like one of the non-workshop elements is mm -hmm. interesting uh, because yeah, it, it really is a strange aspect of it and something you might expect from someone who wasn't going to meetings every week. Um, and something you might expect in a book that it was a little bit rushed too, which is like a fair reason for a lot of the flaws in the book. Like we don't want to attack the book too much. We almost need like a set of constitutional amendments that we, that's really mm -hmm. easy to find where we say, okay, yeah. in this year it was declared mentoring should not have such mm -hmm. high standard. And in this year it was declared that the, that chapter 10, the guide of when you should do things and you should have gone on a three month mm -hmm. retreat in your second year of recovery. It's yeah. like, okay, well, mm -hmm. a lot of people feel yeah. alienated by that. In, in our group, I just say, ignore oh. that. It's just a recommendations yeah. and like, yeah. as if you should wait 60 days to do your inventory, which is terrible advice, but for some reason it's in that section. Um, mm -hmm. So there is evidence that not all of the book was workshopped by the whole team, but it almost, it proves the point indirectly uh, to hear the story from you. So it, it's, it's yeah, really valuable. The, the book is infallible. Uh, like we said, there's grammatical errors, there's spelling errors, you know, it's uh, certainly um, there, there's some things that could be written a little better. There's some things that were way too strict. You know, it, it, it is what it is. It was just a, you know, it was a, a, a slice of a moment in time when um, this came in out where the 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 biggest demand was to get a book out to the, the, this this public that wanted something so you know here we are all these years later and maybe there's going to be a a, a revive you know there's 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 some legal things about you know getting um uh intellectual rights on on the name and in the book you know and and however that goes you know maybe maybe the book will be edited and adapted and there'll be a second edition or maybe we'll just write something completely new or maybe the first thing we'll do as a community is write a supplemental things which uh i know gene and and, and has been putting the, the the bat signal out you know for people to write stories of you know how they're how they're uh, i can't even remember what her, she was asking people to write about yeah, like yeah. how they're doing mentorship or how they're doing yeah testimonials about so, the inventories and mentorship yeah. 
And I was like, I don't know, I never had a mentor. Like no one else ever saw my questions, which is kind of weird. So I was like, I can't write one, but I'm, I'm like, but I have a story about the inventory. It's well, like still, yeah. You know. Maybe maybe you should interview me and then you could transcribe it and then we'll have my <laughs> story. Uh -huh, yeah, finally published. I don't have time, I don't have time to write it. <laughs> Okay, so um, you you hinted at a new book. I'll, I want to come back to that. Uh, what what you think that would be like? So uh, a couple more little questions. Were there drafts of the book that that went around that people got to look at uh, and influence? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I still on my Kindle. I have um, it was called the Refuge Recovery Dash MS manuscript. Um, uh some stuff got kind of moved around yeah i mean it was that was stuff that was passed around for sure and was there like do you have anything to say about the influence that people had on the book at that point what what kind of conversations went um, down well you know through the whole process i wouldn't just say that point but through the whole process of pie piecing it together putting it together editing it uh changing the order and whatever um i mean there was heated debates you know uh uh, George Haas, I will say George Haas, that was part of that stuff. George Haas was a big, and he was on Alan Marlott's side. George Haas was really big into um, uh, harm reduction, the harm reduction model, where uh, where Noah, and, and you know, to be honest, me and, and Joseph and Enrique, we were all about like, no man, total abstinence, you know? We got sober in 12 step, total ab abstinence, uh, you know? And, and so there was a big heated debate about that. And then, and I can't remember, um, Pablo had a big argument about, I can't remember. I mean, that was so long ago. There was a big, he was really, he was really passionate about, about something and, and, you know, and it was heard and it was, and it was taken on. So it, uh, there was a lot of input to it, you know, and, and sometimes to great debate, sometimes with lots of passion and, and yeah, it wasn't, wasn't just people standing around and listening to Noah Reed going, yeah, that's good, that's good. You know, I mean, it was, it was a group process. Yeah. And and you think do you feel like at that point when there was a debate that there was consensus found? Like who who arbitrated the debate? Was it Noah that made the final call? Well, we were all trained facilitators or teachers. So I mean we're you're talking about skillful people who have who have um the the resources of of being able to debate without, you know, shutting down the whole thing. So um yeah, of course it would yeah, there there were there were things that were heard and that there was a consensus made and everybody said yeah i totally agree with that and it was brought in and then there was other things that you know somebody brought something up and then the consensus said no we don't really agree with that and so you know it was it was a group process just like the meetings today was it's all a group process okay cool all right that's that's really interesting thank you for those examples of of the controversy so one about total absence is really interesting because it's so decisive in the book um, and I think it's, I agree with it. I think it's really right. And the, the emphasis on process addiction, which you hinted at earlier, and which is really a, a, one of the most amazing things about refuge recovery, um, the total abstinence really helps with that because it pushes you to dig deeper and deeper into your problems. And uh, was that, who, who had that idea? Where, where did that influence come from? that was just out of necessity because of our meetings you know we be we i will say you know us us dudes you know it was a lot of dudes in the beginning um i i, I forgot to mention shannon smith who is dave smith's wife um she was part of the, some of those early meetings or, or the the committee putting the book together along with mary stan cabbage um uh and J joseph's wife helped too yeah but she was more part of like the meetings and everything um the early early meetings Sorry to mention um, people based on their uh, romantic affiliations. I just I yeah. don't have her name written down. I know. Yeah. Um, Sarita. Big shout out to Sarita. Sarita is amazing. She's she's now she's doing the yoga refuge recovery meetings down in LA, which are pretty. And there's a yoga uh, refuge meeting up here in Portland that's pretty successful. Um, but as far as process addiction, it was just because we started those meetings. Us and again, us dudes. You know, it was a boys' club, unfortunately. Um, uh, maybe that's part of the downfall of the whole thing of uh, <laughs> against the stream and that one. <laughs> but um, we all came from with with uh, drug and alcohol addiction, so um, we created this program for all addictions. But you know, this other stuff wasn't really 
our main thing, you know, certainly not our, our original uh, primary addictions. And so we created these meetings and a lot of people started showing up with sex addiction, with porn addiction, with um, gambling, with codependence. It's, that's been the big thing. Codependence issues have really brought, brought up. It's just another process addiction. And so the community demanded this, you know, and so we had to address it. And it, it's not addressed as well as it should be. I mean, it's pretty minimal in the book. And, you know, there is that supplemental PDF that's available on the, on the website about process addiction. Um, still probably not enough, but, you know, it's, it's, it's what's here currently. And there are process addiction meetings throughout the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's too bad the section on the sex addiction is just so short. So it's almost like the, uh, we, could, we all could have used more of that at, at the time, but luckily there's lots of other material. And okay. That's, that's yeah, great. Maybe, Thank you. Maybe, maybe somebody wasn't ready to look at that part of their lives. Yeah. So there, hint, hint, hint. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, let's see. So um, you talked, uh, Joseph talked about his having written the draft for the four truths. You already clarified that really, that was, that really was like a workshop thing. And in a lot of ways, um, yep. it, it was a group effort. The Eightfold Path section, the, each of the chapters, any details about how those were written? Well, again, I mean, it, that, that's just, I mean, it's all one thing. The Four Noble Truths unfold into the Eightfold Path, right? That's the Fourth Noble Truth. There's freedom from dukkha, uh, from addiction, from suffering, from dissatisfaction through this path. And that's what the Eightfold Path is. So it's, it's, it's just all, it's all the same, same, same. Mm, okay. Um, and so, and, and, and it was the the original, uh, um, the the format that in the book and available on the website that those original those smaller little sections on the four noble truths and the eightfold path that's what we had originally, and then the book just expanded that. That's all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of creative. There's some creativity in there in terms of interpreting them. Uh, having studied the eightfold path like the, the concepts are very specific to mm -hmm. things like developing jhana and samadhi which don't obviously <laughs> refuge recovery doesn't get into um but yeah those short descriptions so those short descriptions were pre-existing you'd say and uh but but filled out by noah uh, to write the book uh it was all workshop together i mean that, that's the thing the whole, the whole, that, that first part of the book is only hundred pages. It's not, we're not talking a lot of material. So it was all workshop together. We all, you know, there, there, these, these, these little sections were brought in. We, fuck, we whittled it away. We changed things. Yeah. I mean, it was, again, I, I don't know. I don't know how much more I can say about, you know, it's, it all was totally a group process. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sorry, sorry to, to sort of try to dig into the specific things. I'm uh, mining for gold here. Um, <laughs> So you already talked about putting Noah's name on the book. Um, Noah was against it. Everyone was every. What, what was the what was the idea that if you had to describe the consensus in the group of what you would have liked that cover of the book to look like? What what do you think it would say? Oh yeah, everybody wanted it without a name on it because um, again the refuge recovery is not just one person you know it's 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 a community so yeah that was the idea you know and the fact that his publisher demanded that they wouldn't you know they wouldn't do that at all and and no publisher would do that you know because it's a it's this kind of this unknown thing um it was just a necessary evil at the time the book needed to come out people wanted it you know so be it hmm. for better or worse so a side question, would the book cost money and for the foreseeable future, it will continue to cost money. Would having that book for free have been something that could have happened at the time? Uh, no, it, there wasn't any benefactors that were wealthy enough to take care of that. Take care of that. And, yeah. and you didn't consider publishing it, just publishing it digitally? That's, you know, I mean, I, I think you can see that that, that limits the, um, what's available, you know, um, or the, I'm, just the, I'm sorry, the, it, it limits the reach of, of uh, you know, how far it can get, you know, it just, it's, it's not promoted that much. It's not, uh, um, you know, it's overlooked easy. 
So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that yeah. wasn't, even yeah. a, it wasn't a, a thing. That wasn't a thing? Okay. Because yeah. I mean, now my fantasy would be that whatever the next thing would be, would be something we could just hand out as a PDF to people uh, mm. without any resources getting used up at all. Um, but it, but I understand, I understand the motivations for having it be published. And certainly I'm sure Refuge got a lot of promotional press and stuff from having HarperCollins be the publisher yeah, at the time. For sure. Yeah, totally. Okay. So you already answered about the disagreements and that was fascinating. Um, so in terms of the future for the book, right? Some people would really rather have an entirely new book. Mm. I think the goal of this was as long as we don't have a new book, I'm hoping we can find peace with the current book um, and understand mm. it through understanding it for what it is, uh, accept it as something that can help us and that we can use to help other people. Um, but what do you think of, for the future, what do you think is likely in terms of a new uh, reading material to go with the program? And what would you love to see? Uh, what, what would your fantasy be? Yeah, well, I, you know, I already mentioned that, you know, currently the Refuge Recovery Nonprofit Board is in negotiations with Noah and, and I think his lawyer about the um, ownership of the, the, the name um, Refuge Recovery and, and the book itself. So uh, it depends on how that goes. You know, if, if, uh, if, if the nonprofit gets control of both, then um, you know maybe we could edit the book. You know we could we could redo it with some some skillful edits and take the name off. Uh, that, I mean that's certainly one possibility. Or if the negotiations don't go well and um, we need to create a new book, I mean that's certainly a possibility. Uh, like like we mentioned earlier, there's already this the, the there's a request out to the community to to bring in stories of their experience within refuge to create some supplemental. Material, so there might be the first book that that the, the next I should say the next book that comes out might be a supplemental book, you know, might be a a, a resource book, you know. Um, uh, I guess worst case scenario, if the 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 intellectual property negotiations don't go well at all, and maybe there's a demand that we can no longer use the name, um, then we might need to change the name. From refuge recovery to something else, and then and, and, and then obviously create a whole new book. Um, this is this is our practice. This is how life goes. Things don't go smoothly and easily. There there is an ebb and flow to everything. Like I said, if it wasn't this, it would have been something else. So so be it. And 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 Jerry, uh, the one thing I'll say too, if if people listen to this and still have a problem with the book. So be it. That's 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 totally their prerogative. It's if I I again I don't want to negate anybody's pain, anybody's suffering. If somebody feels that strongly about the book that it's going to stumble them from sobriety, don't use it. Please don't. If 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 you still want to come to the meetings, more than welcome. If uh, you need to go to something else, uh, I'll, I'll go there with you. You know, there th that's the thing. There's there's just this. There's a lot of possibilities and. Um, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll all play out one way or another. Hmm. So that's beautiful. And I almost want to end there, but I, I want to ask a separate <laughs> question, which is an active, feels like an active controversy. Uh, and there's a sort of a lack of clarity. And I understand why right now it's really hard for the organization in the midst of legal proceedings to say almost anything. Um, right. But this question of, so you brought up this group in Montreal, and I definitely don't want to throw my co-organizer <laughs> under the bus. Um, she did what? have a, she started a brand new, no, 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 oh, oh no, I don't, because it, it sounded maybe like I did, and I'm not. <laughs> she had started a whole new meeting with a lot of new people and was running it tentatively without the book, waiting to see more information. And it happens that this most recent news article from Jezebel, uh, tip the scales for her. And so mm -hmm. she had a vote with them and they discussed together uh, whether to change the book. And in fact, it was One Breath at a Time, the book you mentioned that helped you before Refuge, uh, that she decided they would, that would be the book they would sort of read, do the readings from. They keep the script, but they do the readings from that book until Refuge Recovery has a new book. Mm -hmm. And uh, the tr it's tricky though, because the people in that meeting 
they're not experienced refuge recovery people right. who've done their in the none of them are uh the the, the, one, the one thing I'll say about that, Jer, um, and, and they're more than welcome to do that, but that's not a refuge recovery meeting anymore. And and and, and as a regional rep, if I found out that um, that was happening within my region, we would have to do something about it. You know, that if, if you're calling yourself refuge recovery, just like AA, just like NA, just like CA, um, if you go to any of those meetings anywhere in the world, they're all going to look very, very similar. They're gonna, still going to have the main text as their source. The formats are going to be very similar to each other. So within Refuge, we really need to have that as the same thing. If if you're not reading the Refuge book, um, and, and, and in fact, you're reading, and again, I love Kevin's book, and I still work 12-step. And, and if I'm going to sponsor anybody in 12-step, I want them to read Kevin's book. So I'm not, there's nothing wrong with that. But that is a totally different program. That's not Refuge Recovery. So, you know, I hate to be a hard ass about that, but it's not a refuge meeting anymore. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be called that. You shouldn't be using the script unless you're using this, the, the, the book. And so that, 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 I think that's the answer I, I knew you'd give based on your previous comments. Mm -hmm. And it's just, that's, that's it, you know, hard ass is true because you're telling people to go away. Like, like you said in, in your previous comment, you said, if you want to use, if you don't want to read the book, I understand your pain. But in the mm -hmm. next one, you're saying, if there's no other Buddhist recovery group in your city, I'm sorry, go back to AA. Uh, and, and it's a tough line to walk where someone who is uncomfortable with the book really has no option, which is, if anything, it's why I'm saying, like, you sort of disagreed with me and saying, do what you want. Don't feel like you have to read the book. I'm saying, actually, no, no, read the book. You've got to let go of this aversion to the Noah problem because in so many cases, there is nowhere else with the right kind of Sangha with all the benefits you've expounded. And so it's a tricky line. Like I, I, I hope we can come up with enough material so that someone who doesn't want to do the book can go straight to the uh, inventory investigation questions, which are on the website and don't have Noah's name on them so that they can find all the most important pieces um, and then maybe just like grit through it when we read from the book in the meeting. Um, it, it might surprise you to know that Gene Teller specifically in conversation with that organizer said that it would be okay for them to use a different book if they got consent of the whole group. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is, it's actually in flux right now. And mm -hmm. there is no, there's no affirmative answer because our regional rep was, was disturbed by this exactly, had the exact same reaction as you. And I think that is the historical reality but maybe this is a different moment where, where a little more flexibility is called for but ultimately i think you make a good point that what a refuge meeting is is people who read this book and believed the lessons developed by the community back in the day that you were part of um, and those parts ring so true and they come out in the book and you can feel them um, and uh, making some space i hope we can just make a little space uh, and also keep it refuge recovery because it is, it's the right answer. And there's so much useful truth that I'm, I worry, I like you, I think like you, I think the point is you worry about a meeting where they're not following the refuge recovery at all, where they're calling it that and doing something really different there. And it's going to alienate people. Maybe there's, it becomes theistic. It's too many. Uh, and, but and, and it's already happened. You know, there, there's, mm. there's, there's some groups where it's usually when somebody starts a meeting somewhere and it, and it becomes their meeting. They, they, this ego's involved, this ownership's involved, and they start running the things that, that you know, maybe they, maybe they're uh, got Hindu background and, or, you know, they're new agey or whatever. You know, I've heard about um, these people that run meetings start changing the format. They, they start bringing in like wacky, like, you know, chakra, you know, clearing things. I, I had somebody early on, they had uh, somebody in their community wanted to um, bring in uh, acupuncture. Somebody was really, uh, um, they had their heart in the right place. And they said, you know, this is great. You're doing this Buddhist recovery thing. I want to come in there and offer acupuncture to help all these, all these people to find, you know, some relief from their addictions. It's like, dude, you can't bring in needles into a freaking recovery meeting. You know, <laughs> you can't, you can't, uh, I mean, what a liability that is. So like, you know, people, they have their hearts in the right place, but the, the problem is, most, most of the time, they don't have a deep enough practice where they have the proper skillful discernment to know what's skillful and what's not. 
And when when people start bringing in other meditations, that's when you start getting these chakra things and and you know and divine light and I don't, I, you know whatever else you know those those are not what refuge is about refuge is is, is much closer to a, a, a secular program than anything that's uh ethical or new agey or airy fair or whatever you know so bringing in supplemental reading is really scary you know um if if there's proper discernment you bring in something that's um uh insight tradition and something that's about the four noble truths and the eightfold path you're probably pretty safe but Again, if you don't have the right discernment, that could go way off the rails pretty quickly. And, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's, it's uh, the, the big thing is we got to make sure that um, people, that, that, that newcomers come in and they're getting what they need to hear. You know, they're, they're coming in and they're getting, they're getting a good meditation. They're getting good uh, um, recommendations and they're, they're walking away with some tools. And, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're starting to stray, then, you know, I, I'm, I'm worried about the newcomers. Yeah. Well, that is the best possible argument for this kind of uh, refuge recovery fundamentalism uh, that I could have come up with either. So uh, thank you for anyone thinking about it. You know, Gary makes great points and uh, hopefully we can all be uh, flexible with the rules of what refuge recovery really should be and the, the value of keeping it safe for everyone. Um, also, and, and, and it will develop into what it needs to be. Absolutely. Yeah. And there are ways to discuss and communicate and it's actively growing as an organization. Um, so there's lots of opportunities. All right. Well, if, if anyone has watched all of this, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, Gary, I thank you so much for uh, humoring me and being such a good sport and for everything you do for refuge recovery. Um, I know you just added me on Facebook one day and I, I guess it's because I was posting on the group or something, but I immediately felt a sense of being supported and like there was an international sangha and it just means a lot what you're doing and this whole meeting came out of you making comments on the Facebook group that were just really insightful and showed so much knowledge and so uh, making yourself accessible to this, to all those Portland meetings, oh my God. Um, to all the mm -hmm. things you do. So thank you so much. And uh, thank you to all the founders and people who've worked on refuge recovery over the years. Uh, it's been amazing. Um, you saved my life and you saved a lot of other lives. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can all keep that in mind as we think about the book. Yeah, yeah uh, you had your own life saved. Oh yeah, 100%. All right. All right. So, at least my sanity. If not my life, my sanity uh -huh. and, and my, my, my well-being. And, and I do uh, I'll just throw this out there. Uh, any communities that are strong enough or any communities that are big enough that have a demand, I'm more than happy to come out and lead workshops and day longs uh, wherever you're at. I've been doing that for a lot of communities and, um, and it's a great way to help um, strengthen and build and, and, and foster community as well. So hit me up if you're, if you're interested. Well, that's beautiful. Uh, and thank you. And what a great, anything else you want to pitch in case before we go? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher at Portland Insights Meditation Community, so we're found at portlandinsight.org. Uh, there's uh, my teacher, Robert Beattie, is um, one of the most beautiful um, and, and loving and compassionate men on earth. I can't feel um, any more gratitude and um, appreciation that I do. And uh, he's got a, he's got a, uh, our talks get a live stream on Sunday and it, and it goes to his YouTube page. If you just look at Robert Beatty. Portland on YouTube. There's uh, some of my talks around there. Um, I, I should be getting a website pretty soon myself. So um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. Uh, you know, I, I, as a teacher too, I do offer um, private instruction, one-on-one -on -one instruction, like this kind of thing, video conferencing. So, uh, you know, find me on Facebook. I, this, this is my name, Gary Sanders. And, and uh, there's, a, there's a, a cartoon of me meditating on a pile of dynamite. So <laughs> look for that. <laughs> All right. Well, this wasn't practice, so it's not a dedication of merit, but uh, may, oh, you want to give us one? Give, 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 give us yeah, a little. Well, you know, I, I, I've been reading uh, for a while now. Uh, there's a, a quote from Norm Fisher that, that summarized, he says, you know, one day you realize that practice becomes your life and life becomes your practice. So this, this, this conversation was practice. You know, this, this was mindful communication. This was, 
this was a sharing of hearts. This was a connection. Um, I, I, I feel I feel even more connected to you now. And um, you know, this is a beautiful conversation. So I appreciate what you've offered. And um, if if anything uh, wholesome, anything pure, anything true has arisen out of our conversation, our our practice, may it be offered out to all beings everywhere. May all beings find happiness and the causes of happiness. May all beings find peace and the causes of peace. May all beings find freedom from suffering, freedom from all addictions. May we all wake up together. Thank you so much.